All right, today we're talking about the Norco range. It just kind of goes. It'd be super easy to write this off as like mini downhill bike park shuttle only bike because it's so big, it's so burly, it's got that high pivot. And yeah, you'd kind of be right, but this bike also has a couple of tricks hidden up its sleeves. So stick around to find out what those are. Super quick hits on this bike, 170 millimeters front, 170 millimeters rear travel, size specific geometry. So 63 degree head tube angle in the extra large that I rode, 1329 millimeter wheelbase, which is just huge. This bike has a high pivot, which means it has a very rearward axle path, which we'll get into later. So quick hits, you want to see the rest of it, Google it. All right, let's get into it. Let's jump into those ride impressions. All right, just starting my ride on the Norco range. This is one big bad Larry. So I've been riding this bike for the past little while. It surprised me in a couple of ways. The first thing is that the bike isn't super inefficient, or I should say the uh, suspension isn't super inefficient. You know, I assumed 170 millimeter high pivot coil, this thing was just gonna be real bouncy. And so far I haven't felt that. I mean, it doesn't have that firm snappy feel of like a little trail bike, but honestly, I've never once felt the need to reach down for that lockout lever. One thing I've heard people complain about with this bike is the drag with the idler pulley. And to be honest, it's there, but I don't really think it's as big of a deal as a lot of people make it out to be. So I guess what I'm getting at is, this bike doesn't pedal as bad as I thought it would. It is stupid heavy. You know, I'm at 38 pounds with a bunch of upgrades here. So I don't really care too much about how much my bike weighs. I think people blow bike weight out of proportion, especially if you're not racing cross country. But this bike is heavy. It's noticeably heavy, but I'm gonna stop crying about how heavy it is now talk a little bit more about climbing performance. It is very, very long, and you really feel that on tight uphill switchbacks. A little bit of technique goes a long way though, but this is not the best technical climbing bike. It does a pretty good job of giving you a lot of traction, driving the bike forward, instead of having that rear wheel break loose. Ooh, there's some guts there. This is like mountain lion alley right here. This is a little spooky. So not a great technical climber, but it is very smooth on bumpy climbs. There is a lot of traction. You may be thinking I'm just ragging on this bike, but wait till we get to the downhill. <laughs> All bikes make sacrifices. This one sacrifices uphill performance for downhill performance. And it's not even trying to hide that fact. But I'm gonna guess, if you're at all interested in this bike, it's not because you think it's a great climber. Overall performance, we'll call it a I don't know, C plus, B minus. I don't want you to think I'm being harsh. Just trying to be honest. And I know it's pretty silly to uh, rant and rave about a riding jacket, but this one, this uh, Pearl Izumi jacket, so nice. First of all, it's hunting season, so I'm stoked that it's orange. I'd prefer not to get shot. It folds up into its own little pocket, and then that pocket has like little bungee straps. So you can strap it around your handlebars or your top tube or something. And Shimano only bought me a house and a brand new truck and you know, gave me five grand just to say that, but you know, whatever, not sponsored. So I know this is gonna look a little stupid on camera, but I gotta bring it up. Right up here, there's a uh, little rocky chute. And the way this bike holds the high line through it, through like the ledgy off camber rocks, is just insane. It was the first indication I had that this bike was just gonna be a freaking tank on the way down. Like, Insane. <laughs> I can't believe it. It's so wild. Anyway, back to the boring climbing part. Whew. All right, made it to the top. Gonna start the downhill on the Norco range. And this is where all your extra suffering on the uphill should hopefully pay off. <laughs> this thing is freaking fast. It just kind of goes. Like, really fast. <laughs> All right, so Geo, let's talk about that. That front end is uh, really far out there. 
it's very downhill bike feeling. And an extra large, this bike is over 1300 millimeters and it has a very rearward axle path. So as you take hits, it uh, gets even longer. So this bike is stable. It does not care what you run into or where you point it. It really, I've never ridden a bike that cares less about what you do. It's just stoked to go and it wants to go fast. I thought I was being clever my first ride out on this and put some trail casing tires on there. See if I can make it a bit lighter. And that was a mistake because the speeds this bike wants to go through chattery, nasty terrain, uh, I double flatted. Neither one of those tires survived. You can just put your heels down and just charge through nasty rocks. Like that. <laughs> it just freaking goes off camber lines, bumpy lines, terrible lines. Just doesn't really care. One thing that's really surprised me about this bike is I thought it was just gonna be ultra plush, really soft and gooey and kind of vague, but it actually feels pretty supportive. Uh, the suspension feels rather firm, not harsh or chattery at all by any means. And that makes a, a big, bulky, heavy bike feel a little bit lighter. Kind of gets rid of a little bit of that cumbersome feeling. So let's talk just a little bit more about that suspension design. Uh, like I said, it's very supportive, but like incredibly deep and bottomless. And this bike has a, a high pivot, so that gives it a very rearward axle path. Oh, flat. Damn, we're done. That's a uh, big hole. <laughs> There's no air left in that thing. And like the uh, well-prepared Boy Scout that I am, I do not have a tube. Oh, that sucks. There's a lot of really sharp rocks up there. We're gonna have to finish this right up a different day. See you later, folks. I'm back. Decided to rain a ton last night, so I had to come to a different trail that handles water just a little bit better. All right, so where were we? We were talking about suspension performance and that rearward axle path. That makes the bike incredibly stable. <laughs> it's a little wet. Got some puddles here. Oh, there's a big one. Ah, oh, got it. <laughs> so I've never ridden a bike that smooths out big square tits quite as well as this bike. I think it has a lot to do with having 170 millimeters of rear travel, as well as a very rearward axle path. That helps the back wheel just move out of the way. So the bike feels awesome in the chunky stuff. The back wheel doesn't get hung up. You don't lose any speed and that kind of stuff. It just goes and eats it all up. So I've been noticing that uh, I struggle to corner on this bike. I think part of it is that it's a very long bike, but honestly, I think the biggest thing is going way faster in the straightaways and through the rocks that just coming into the corners with way more speed. Haven't quite adjusted to that yet. So earlier I talked about the suspension being pretty supportive and not just like gooey, mushy. And that has been huge for making this bike feel a little less bulky and, and cumbersome. <laughs> it actually jumps pretty okay. This is rad. The suspension does 
a lot of work for you to get this bike off the ground. I wouldn't go as far as calling it poppy. I was pretty surprised at how well it jumps, how well you can unweight, get over trail obstacles. Pretty surprised by that. I think it all comes down to the suspension design there, keeping it firm and supportive. So a lot of bikes get described as monster trucks. This bike is one. It makes everything on the trail a little less scary and it makes it almost feel like it's coming at you in slow motion. The bike just has that calm, cool, collected feel about it. You know, feels like slow motion, but it's definitely not. <laughs> you carry a lot of speed. Handles big hits really well. Handles little chatter really well. Just, oh, nice. Just a really smooth magic carpet ride of a bike. This bike is just ridiculous. It's so much fun. The type of riding it lets you do, it's awesome. We're gonna head back to the garage. We're gonna talk about who this bike is for and if it's the right bike for you. Let's jump into a couple key takeaways from the ride impressions. Uphill, yep, you guessed it. Bike's heavy and kinda slow. But I was actually really surprised at the pedal platform on this bike. It was a lot more efficient than I thought it was going to be. So that brings it up a couple notches. I've been riding this bike for the past couple weeks and I'm a little bit slower, but I can still hang with my friends. So not a deal breaker for me. If this bike goes uphill like an e-bike with the battery turned off, it goes downhill like an e-bike with the throttle stuck. This thing is just freaking fast. Bumps don't exist. Big square edged hits don't exist. Everything just gets easier and less scary. You pull for bigger gaps. You hit bigger jumps. You hit nasty rocky lines faster with more confidence. Things just don't freak you out quite as much when you're on this bike. We're gonna talk about the Norco Ride Aligned system program. I don't know what you wanna call it. Norco puts a ton of thought into bike sizing so that everybody from extra large to small has the same ride experience. The geometry is size specific, front and rear triangles. I love size specific geometry. I don't think my bike should have the same rear center as a small or a medium for that matter. I, I really like the concept of size specific geometry. So well done, Norco. Good job, Thumb two thumbs up. Another part of Ride Aligned is you're able to input your weight, your height, your riding style, your riding ability, and Norco puts it all into this magic computer that spits out a, an answer for you on bike size and setup. So suspension settings, um, front and back, uh, handlebar height, width, stem length, spacers, stack, all of it. It's very, very in-depth. And I set my bike up according to this. You know, I figure they know the bike better than I do, and they've put a lot of work into making sure I fit. So the question you came to have answered, is the Norco range the right bike for you? Uh, do you like going fast downhill in nasty, gnarly terrain? Do you like Kanye levels of confidence? If so, I think you'd like the Norco range. Don't get me wrong, this is not your all-purpose, ride everywhere type of bike. If you buy this and plan on riding blues and greens all day, you might not love the bike. But if you like nasty terrain, black diamonds, double black diamonds, big stuff, yeah, you're gonna love this thing. All right, just to wrap this up, bottom line on the Norco range, I have never ridden a bike that cares less what you smash it into or where you point it or what you do on it. Thanks for sticking around, see you next time.